Hello, how are you? Thank you for stopping by to my knitting podcast. My name is Claudia Gabriela and you can find me in Instagram as Gabriela Cos and in Ravelry the same, Gabriela Cos. And um, yes, it's been a month since the last time I recorded. Uh, last month, uh, February was very busy, it, it flew, it was very fast. I had to work uh, and complete some projects at work, everything went well, but it was crazy busy, definitely. And I couldn't sit uh, to record because I, when I wanted to record, I was so tired and I didn't have so much um, progress to show you. Then I also started preparing my spring collections for Isaloni yarn that I will show you at the end of the episode. And yeah, it was busy, but good, 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 uh, all healthy, family doing well. And yeah, I hope you too are doing well. And um, thank you for coming back if you're a return viewer. And thank you for stopping by if you are a new viewer. So yeah, uh, this is my knitting podcast and I will show you, uh, I have a one finished project and I have uh, my working projects, uh, then I have a, a new cast on, so I will show you. So let's grab something to drink and yeah, accompany, with, accompany me with uh, my, my stuff. So uh, what I wanted first, first finish project. So you remember last time in my episode, I mentioned that I was participating in a test knit and this was for Salt and Stone Knits in Instagram and she was uh, preparing the release of her new sock design. So there, here they are. So these are the heroin socks and you can find them in Ravelry already. I will put the, the links below. So here they are. So these are uh, ankle socks and uh, um, <laughs> these are my sock blockers that I got long time ago. Those are from Crazy Monkey. I don't know if you can see the details. Yeah, but these are my llama sock blockers. So here are the socks. Do you remember I was making them? I, I think I was at the at, at not just halfway on one of the socks of the last episode. And I managed to get on time and deliver all the details. What you usually do when you do a test knit, you have to, to tell them the gauge, then how much yarn did you use and um, all the details if, you know, the feedback. If you participate in a test knit before, that's what you usually do when you complete your socks. So I use my Marilyn base, which is 100% Corridale, in the Clemente um, colorway. So here they are. They're very nice construction. You do short rows, German short rows for the toes and then for the heels. And then it's mostly a stockinette, reverse stockinette and pearls and see the stitch here. So they are finished. I love them. They're very comfy. And uh, yeah, well, I when I try, they are very comfy, but I, I haven't worn them yet. I wanted to show you because they are, they are, they are done and I'm so happy. So that's the only complete finished object that I have for today but I have an if a half finished a finished object which is another pair of socks that I was making this I, I think I showed you this in the first comeback episode that I recorded in January and these are just plain vanilla socks which uh, I am using a discontinued year that this was MCM that I was carrying before but I don't um, carry any any base with nylon so uh, making this was one of the last that uh, I got from one of the festivals and the, this colorway though I am continue um, dyeing it's purple light and yeah this is done one unblocked and I cast on the second pair here it is going along I started this I'm doing an online class and while I listening to the class I just crack on my needles and knit 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 so I think I started this yesterday and yeah, that's my progress on there. So yeah, that's the only thing that I finished for the last uh, month. Uh, as I said, it was very busy, but I kept knitting anyhow. So I can quickly show you my work in progress. Well, this is one, that's the second uh, 
pair of this simple vanilla sock with short rows, uh, short rows, German short rows uh, heel, and this is a simple, um, what do you say, knit uh, knit uh, SSK and um, what is the other? How do you say it? It's knit up, knit two together and SSK. So that's the the toe. And uh, yeah, my work in progress, as usual, my blanket, I'm still working on my blanket. And I remember last episode, I showed you that I ran out of the silk hair mohair that I was using. And uh, since it was a discontinued yarn and I ran out of that and from my stash, I didn't want to buy anything else. And I kept knitting with the knitted yarn color oats, but I didn't like it kind of and uh, I was missing the halo from the mohair so I went to internet and start searching for this base if there was some place that I could get um, some leftovers or not and I found a place it's a small um, yarn shop in St. Gallen here one of the cantons in Switzerland so I found two balls of this base and I got it of course that that yarn was not the same lot of the ones that I had, but it doesn't matter, it's okay, you cannot notice that much. But it was a bit orangey, more orangey than this one. So I was, so I had to rip, uh, rip off, so frog it, the part of the, the I knit with knitting, and I think it was 10 centimeters or so. And this is 300 stitches, so it was a lot. So I frog it, that's why I kept these uh, stitches here, if you can see. This. And then I start knitting with the new yarn that I got, but I ran out of that yarn as well because of course it was discontinued and the shop didn't have more, so I decided uh, to use another. And while I was looking uh, to get those uh, two balls of the discontinued yarn, I found in the same shop um, another base from the brand that uh, um, which is Shulana and I found and it's this one I don't know if you can see this one so this one it is also mohair but it's 50% mohair 50% merino and um, it has these shades of oranges brownish and kind of not green but beige uh, but it could go well with the, the entire blanket so I got four balls with the other two uh, because I wanted to try if it's, it was good or not and it I, I like how it looked but four balls was not enough it's just, because I, I have here the, the I bought 20 balls after that because this is a thicker yarn this is the so said I don't think this this yarn is still in business but um, I got what the, the yarn shop had and this is, as I mentioned, it is 50% uh, um, Laine Vierge, which is Churu Volle in Virgin Wool in German, um, in English. So, and 50% Mohair, and, but this is kind of um, bulky yarn because they call for needle size 7 and 12 millimeters, and uh, it only has 50 meters, the ball. So, with four, I get, I think I got here. So I said, I, I need more. So I bought 20 more balls. So that's why I have, this is one bag, <laughs> one bag, one box, and I have another one, but but it needs very fast. And I am, I am enjoying, it's very soft. It's softer than the, the previous yarns that I was using. And I also ran out of Nutiden. I mean, it's not that I ran out, I still have, but if I was using that nutiden with this, I, you could not see, um, you couldn't feel the nutiden anymore because since it's this is kind of a bulky plus that it would be very chunky, and uh, yeah, I just uh, save the rest of the nutiden yarn to do or to make something else with this, and I kept working with that. So I am this. I still need to. Uh, keep going because the blanket now it's until here but I want to cover my entire body and my husband as I mentioned 
So uh, I also changed the needle size because I was using a needle size 5 and this is 5.5 millimeters. Yeah, yeah, this is 5.5 millimeters. Those are my signature needles. I love them. And it's flying, it's flying and still need this while I'm watching TV and I cover myself. So I hope to finish really this before the, the warm uh, weather comes because I'm going to be sweating. So um, that's still, as you see, it grows heavily. Look at this. It is growing and it goes perfectly. These colors goes perfectly with the rest. So I am happy. So keep working on my blanket. And don't forget that we have a little on the, that lasts until the end of the year, which is make your blanket. So that is the progress that I have with my garter stitch blanket. And then I also work a bit on my Porsche shawl that is by Natasha Hornby. And it is in the 10th issue of Lane magazine. So last time I showed you, I was here. And this is a new progress keeper and I will show you, tell you more about later. So I was here and I only wore this, it's not that much. And why? Because while I was waiting to receive the new yarn for my blanket, I started working again on my shawl and finishing the socks. But I made a mistake here. I don't know if you notice, here is a bit, um, how would I say, not as even needed as the rest. So what happened here, I somehow started knitting this stitch all the way in, in this, but you have to twist uh, going like this. I don't know what is the name of this stitch, but you go this, twist this way, then twist back and then twist again and back. So I wasn't doing that and I, I noticed later because I started doing this while I was watching in the dark, uh, making it in the dark, we were watching now a film or something. And then the following day I saw, I said, oh, bummer. And I said, shall I leave it? Because since this is kind of a halo yarn with silk mohair and nothing then, as well said, you don't really notice, but I know it's there. So I frog it, but I didn't frog the entire project. I just undo this part and then started knitting again with additional needles. So and it worked well. And now I am back on track, but I lost time while making this. So it is slowly growing. And I think when I'm finished with this, I will be wearing in fall because, or maybe in the chilly, because spring is coming, but this is still chilly. Ah, I didn't say what is today. Today is Saturday, March the 6th. And this morning it was really chilly. Uh, so yeah, I think probably I can finish to wear before summer. Let's see. Let's see how the pace goes while eating this. So those are my working projects that you see, I don't have many uh, lately. I'm just keep going and the blanket is what is taking that I always come, go back there every night. I think I need my blanket if I have the yarn to do it. Now that I have 20 balls, I think I will keep it working on that. Mm. And probably I will be working soon and uh, I mentioned last um, episode that I usually participate in the um, Making Magazine preview program, which is that they send you the preview of the patterns and then you can choose what pattern you want to make and then you make and you have a deadline. It's not a test needed per se. It is just the, the, the patterns are, will be published already. The magazine is already in production, but you test, uh, sorry you need one of the projects. So when the, the launch is happening, you have many pro many people were already working on the projects, which is nice. So I received the email and I chose my uh, project. I will start that soon. I cannot show you until the publication of the magazine, but I'm so happy to participate on that. Then I saw uh, last week or the last two weeks, the new uh, socks that Stone needs another stone it's in Instagram but she's Charlotte Stone she lives in in Switzerland she lives in the other side of the lake where I live and she published the cosmic flow uh, socks so that's what I saw and I uh, these are if you can see yeah those 
here the socks so i said i i would like to try to make a uh, color work socks i never done color work in the sense that you are using um you have floats behind of the i don't know how to explain it because i i did socks with um contrasting colors which is not color work of course you're mixing colors but it's not the same so this is going to the first one that i'm making this and i chose uh yarn from isaloni as well and um this is my progress so I am using my Everest uh, base, which is yak, silk and merino. I know that will be very luxurious socks, but I love this base. I already use this base to make um, one of uh, Melody Hoffman's um, socks, which I don't remember the name and I showed you in the first episode when I came back this year um, to podcasting. So th this is my progress. I don't know if you can see it. So I think the color, it is, the camera is blowing the colors, but this is a mauve kind of color. Uh, this is Umania and this is Master Seed. So those are the colors that I'm using. No, yeah, you, here you can see it. That's better. Okay, so Umania. I don't know for the ones who live in Switzerland and especially in the French side, Umania is a, a variety of wine that I love that is from the Canton Valley and uh, I started drinking this wine because a colleague of mine back in the time when I was living in the French part uh, she told me that Umania this wine has a lot of iron on it and since I suffer from chronic um, anemia <laughs> I started drinking this and I love this variety of wine and that's why I call it and it's very uh, the tannin do you say that tannin in English I don't know that is that is very it's deep and tasty and yeah I love this is a mix of um, kind of aubergine mauve wine Bordeaux yeah and these two together I love them and yeah that's my progress and I'm using and this is funny because when I started knitting and started crafting and I was seeing all the stitch markers that the people had and the knitters and say, oh, I don't have any stitch markers here in Switzerland. It was very difficult to find things. So I said, I will make my own. So I went to Manor. Manor is kind of a big um, store, department store where you can find anything. And there is a section where you can find things. Uh, they call it Bastellen, which is to make uh, crafts. And I bought uh, Swarovski crystals, this one. And uh, I said, I there is a section where you can buy stuff to make jewelry. So I got some um, cape cables. Yeah, it's kind of cables to make uh, jewelry. And then I bought this. I have a lot of those Swarovski crystals to make. And I made this. Um, this is stitch marker and since it's the color of the yarn I said why not I will use it just to mark the beginning of the round so this is my new uh, socks so what I notice I am making kind of one socks a month which is which is something that I never done before but with this finishing in February then I finish my kind of Christmas socks in January and this is the third socks which I started this week so one pair of socks per month. So let's see if I can keep this track. I love me making socks because they are small and you can just stick. But as I love, these are the type of socks that I love the most, vanilla, because you can make them very fast. Yeah. Uh, and for this, I am using, I don't know if you know, if you know this um, needles, I don't have the box, but these are Adi, Adi needles. And this, the, uh, it's, a, it's a set that comes with three and uh, they have let me find the third one i can show you okay so it's easier for me to use for color work this uh, to make color work with this because if um with magic loop i my floats i don't my floats i don't like my floats so this is the type of uh needles i don't know how they are called i would need to bring my 
my box well but they have as you see they are kind of double point with a cable in the middle which makes it flexible for color work and when I do color work like this I will tell you about this uh, cardigan I kind of use continental and English style so one color I use continental and the other I use with this I don't know which one is the predominant or because there's this technique that what is your predominant color or something like that so which I don't know if this would be the predominant or this one but depending on how many stitches uh, for instance if you have to make a float of six stitches then I rather use the main color kind of with this uh, with in English style and the shorter color or the other one I don't know like two stitches let's say I use continental because that this in this way the float I can make it longer and not very tight I don't know if you need like this in color work but that's how it works for me and I try to to find this there is this tool which is in metal that you have kind of two loops to make color work so you it's easy for you to pick one or the other but no I'm just using my two fingers to, to do it because I found there is a place here in a, in a web shop but I don't want to buy something that I think costs seven francs plus seven francs of the the shipping it doesn't make sense so once the, sh the shops are open again I will go and find it yeah so these are my working projects so it's going to be a short episode because I don't have many things to show you but I can talk about what I am wearing so uh, I am wearing the um, a spark cardigan by Andrea Maori so I made this last year during salmon can you believe it it was easy because you start with the, with the sleeves and then you start working the body and you make it in the round it was easy I was in the thoracic it was not a issue a big issue with the heat it was okay so and it was my first time making color work so I made first the the, the sleeves and I noticed because since I, it was my first time making color work so my tension was a bit tighter in sleeves so in 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 the pattern she recommends to make it um, I think um, one stitch um, bigger because this is usually what happens so but it's okay it's a bit like um, like a sock that it's very fitted but it's okay it doesn't it doesn't bother me and yeah so I am you see uh, this I made with Isaloni yarn as well with the Opera Decay which is a hundred percent super fine merino and with the Ecru which is natural yarn and Anastasia's doll color which you see it's very very nice it's a purpley pinkish yellowish Turkish uh, turquoise and uh, speckles and uh, yeah it was this cardi unit in the round and the new stick so it was also my first time sticking so it was crazy I think I recorded um, stories in Instagram of my sticking this base is super wash so when you do color work it's better to do a non super wash yarn because that it when you um, do the super wash process you are cutting you are burning all the the halo that the yarn has that that makes the yarn felt so so it's more slippery but it's super soft this yarn and it works to make a uh, color work anyway because I secure I use the um, crochet method to secure the stick and uh, then I can I made this longer that it's called for because the cardigan is called to make it to here to the waist but I make it longer why because I forgot I just kept knitting I was so entertained making this stitch that when I realized I think I did 10 centimeters longer or 15 centimeters longer where I had to start preparing for this, at the, um, decreasing the raglan decrease to attach the the sleeve so well the sleeves were already attached so yeah I made it longer but it's it's I'm using like a coat I went this morning to do the groceries with my husband and it was perfect so I was worried now I'm a bit 
warm and I will take this off but I wanted to show you to uh, let me stand up to show you how long this is so here it is you know it is cold until here but I made it really 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 long which I like and it's nice and that's the pattern how it looks and you go it's meant to be here but I think it's I made it kind of 25 centimeters or even 30 centimeters longer and it looks nice and you make as well this um, cord like a belt very interesting as well this is in the natural and I love it it's very nice very cool cardi so here it is I can show you the the neck and the band it is I'm looking this because Here's my camera where I can see if I am showing you properly. So this is the Spark Cardi that I finished last year. I think it was in October, November. I don't remember. So it is, it is very nice and comfy. I think probably I will take it out in a bit. So let me grab some tea. Uh, this is my... I don't know if you know the Mother Bird Project. It is an association that you can make birds and uh, they send it to, I think mostly uh, to Africa for kids that they don't have access to toys. So you make really nice birds uh, and then you send with a tag and then they ship everywhere. It's really nice. And I bought this in. Uh, I think it was the first or the second Vogue knitting and I participated in New York. So they had a stand, so I bought a t-shirt and this um, mug, which is very nice. Now, I can quickly show you something that I got. I show you my Progress Keeper. And uh, you might know Ocean by the Sea. She has a, um, a web shop. She dyes yarn naturally and she also makes stitch markers and progress creepers so she had an update it was two or three weeks ago and i what is fantastic about ocean is that she makes everything from scratch and she puts so much love and soul to whatever she does and i remember i bought yarn from her last edinburgh festival that it was in 2019 so she was participating like a pop-up um, show and she was in the stand of Isolda and I didn't know her at the time but I saw the people crazy going and queuing for uh, Ocean by the Sea and say who is she and she dies yarn beautifully and you have to know her and you have to meet her and say okay I will stand in the queue or I think we with my husband because my husband was with me I couldn't just stand he was very patient accompanying me everywhere so I said Let's see, I will, I, I, I guess I quickly went into Instagram to see what she does and say, okay, it seems that she, she makes really nice stuff. So once the queue was gone and I said, I will buy the left, whatever, whatever is left. So there were some skeins and I bought this beautiful skein, beautifully dyed and she is fantastic. So I follow her on Instagram. I follow what she, whatever she, she, she posts everything in her stories. She is a poet as well. So she's wonderful. So, when I saw she was making these stitch markers and progress keepers, I said, I have to get them. Because not only the love of what she puts, whatever, whatever she, she makes, but also because these are crystals and semi-precious. And I'm, I love uh, everything related to crystals and protections and light. And um, yeah, so here they are these are the progress keepers that i got plus the one that you saw in my in my shawl so here you have a sort of um amber uh, uh, moonstone which is selenite then you have all sort of uh, she also put some beads and uh, yeah uh, i don't know the name of all these stones but i know some of them they have a property to protection of your energy field and yeah that's why the selling it for me it's it's very important so I got them and I said oh while I'm knitting I will have another protection with the stones and 
she makes as well this paper she painted every single small square where she puts all the all the stitch markers and progress keeper, which i find it's fantastic and here it is the progress keeper uh, those uh, these are the stitch markers Good. you see all the precious stones that she makes and then of course this as well and i saw because she shows the progress of whatever she does and in in her stories and which is fantastic and she also sent this little cloth which is to clean because this is our silver sterling silver and then sometimes they get dark then you can clean them which is fantastic and yeah i'm really in love with this because of you can feel the love put in this um, products and yes support small businesses as always yeah so that's that i wanted to show you that i acquire and i also wanted to show you because i was organizing my stitch markers because i had stitch markers everywhere in every single uh, project pad that i have i put stitch markers because you always use them or if i don't have i use just a uh, scrap yarn and but I organize everything in this. This is a small bag that I bought in, in Bolivia when I was visiting my mom. And here they are the cholitas, you see? These are the typical, the women, how they dress over there, not everywhere in Bolivia, because depending on where you go, you have cholitas, you have people, and the cholitas, they dress different from region to region. Sometimes they have shorter, polleras, what they call that, they're the skirts. Uh, which we call pollera. Sometimes they are shorter, the different colors. Sometimes they are longer from where I come from. They, they were longer polleras and heavier because they use under, I don't know how it's called, it's under the skirts. They use kind of something to make it kind of poof. Uh, what's the name of that? I need to find. But yeah, those are the cholitas and these cholitas, to me, they seem to be cholitas from Cochabamba, which is a different region, because you can recognize the cholitas not only with, by the skirt, but also by the hats. They use different hats. In Chuquisaca, for instance, another region, they use the hat is a bit uh, taller, and in La Paz is smaller, they call it borsalino. I don't know if you know that type of uh, hats. And then in Cochabamba, they are middle. And in the valley, because those regions are the valley, which is warmer, the hats are white in La Paz, which is, is colder. The, white, the hats are black because that attracts the heat or not. One day I will tell you that. So I bought this one because of the cholitas. And this is a bag that you can make like this and close. You can, I suppose, put some jewelry here because they have, I don't know if you can, they have a small, um, if I can, ah, here you are. small pouches in all of the, over the the bag and I put in each pouch my stitch markers so I have one two three four five six seven eight pouches with my stitch markers different stitch markers and then in the middle I put the stitch markers that I these are kind of progress keepers that I got at the beginning where only plastic was available and this I could buy from Manor or anywhere. Then I got this uh, like a felted ones. Um, here I keep, this is my Betty Boo. I think an uh, old colleague of mine went to States and uh, brought some mints and here I kept because I keep this kind of tin uh, cans to put stitch markers. And here I have this stitch markers that I made with um, I had a class long time ago that I took with Mel from, um, I don't know what is her podcast, podcast anymore, but she used to live in Hawaii, then now she lives in Alaska. And she did a class with different crafters and different sessions, and one of them was making um, jewelry with paper. And I made this stitch marker, put there, with paper, you roll paper and you make kind of a bead. So I made this stitch marker. So here I keep the stitch markers I made. I also, I have this um, Swarovski, more Swarovski that I made. And this once, uh, it was the Judy from the Giggling Gecko yarns that gifted me in 
that was in the first Swiss Yarn Festival that was in Zug. We were at the uh, in the boat. There was a trip in the boat, and she was she she had the stitch markers and she gave me these ones that was long time ago. And yeah, and all of this that I made with Swarovski that I collect in my Betty booth. And then, of course, as I mentioned, I keep all the these are for sweets that sweets that they give you and this is when you go to uh to change your tires when it's winter and these are very typical sweets that i don't know if these are swiss ones yeah swiss typically and um i kept this and i depending on the type of stitch markers i keep these are my my oct pentagon stitch markers and then i have this other square stitch markers. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. So I was arranged. I have a lot of stitch markers. You always need stitch markers, right? So ah, I have this other that's from Hohi. It was a gift that uh, when I got something for Christmas, she put that as a gift. And uh, I have the other stitch markers that I show you. Those are mostly progress keepers that I have. I show you that the other day. So I kept all my stitch markers in one place. And whenever I need something, I just grab one tin, one um, can, and I put in my project bag. So yeah, that's what I was arranging. Now, I think that's the, the that could be it. I, I want to show you the collection that I prepared for Isaloni. I am having a shop update next week and I also was working to redo my website because the themes, because you have themes on your website whenever you choose, I, I was not no, liking anymore. So I wanted to change something more minimalistic. So I'm working on that. And to celebrate the new launch of my website, I prepared this um, collection. So if you're interested, you can still accompany me to show you. If not, thank you. <laughs> next, see you next uh, episode. So Isaloni Yarn. My next shop update is going to be next week, as I mentioned, with a new website. And I will be putting this to the shop. I never put this base to the shop. Uh, I usually uh, work this uh, base for um, this, the festivals. But this is the first time that I am putting this one. And uh, yeah, this is my gentle palette, which is perfect for Chris, uh, Christmas. I'm seeing Christmas. It's perfect for a spring because uh, the colors, the tonalities are um, uh, very soft. And uh, let me show you what it is. So this is the base Swish, that is, I call it Swish the base, which is 70% uh, BFL. Uh, 20% silk and 10% cashmere, so it's very luxurious uh, base and they are dyed naturally. So for this ones, what I use, I use, I collect onion skins whenever I am making something uh, when I'm cooking, I just collect the, all the onion skins and I, once I have a big quantity of them, I just dye my yarn. Then I have avocado pits and avocado skins as well that I collect when I'm making uh, something with avocado and once I have a big um, amount of um, leftovers to dye I use that then I mentioned in the first I think it was in the first episode of my shawl that I showed you that I dyed with um, walnut husks so those walnut husks were collected by a friend of mine that lives in Tangen in the canton Schaffhausen where I used to live she has a, a big uh, walnut trees and she every um, fall she collected me this the how would it, the protection the husk of the walnuts and that's what I dyed uh, the other color I will show you each one of them and then I use um, uh, logwood. I had uh, logwood uh, extracts that I bought a long time ago and then cochineal. So let me show you first each one of them. So you will see two sh different shades of uh, each one. So this is the gentle palette. So let me see. This is the number four and this is the number one. I will quickly show you and tell you what I'm talking about. This is the number two because I have five colors in the gentle palette. Um, 
collection. So, and I, I, I put names because what is that I use, so numbers. So the gen gentle palette number one, it's with cochineal, and you will see here two type of shades. And why? This is the first batch of the dye, and I always dye uh, to exhaust the dye. I mean, with the natural, it's more complicated than the acid dyes. The acid dye just takes very fast. And when I still have leftovers of the natural dye, I will dye a second batch, which is a softer version of the first. So this is the first batch of the Gentle palette, which is dyed with cochineal. And then this is this the gentle palette one soft, which I call because this is more saturated, right? So this these are the two. You see, it's different, of course, shades because not everybody likes <laughs> this hot pink, which I really find it's beautiful. And this is more softer pink. So this is the gentle palette number one. The gentle palette number two is the Logwood. So it is also the same. Uh, the first uh, batch of Logwood is very saturated. Here's like purplish. And this is kind of a lavender. Um, yeah, more. Well, this would be lavender and this is lilac. Uh, so the same to exhaust the dye, I, I put as, um, another skein. And then you have two different shades with the same uh, extract. This is Logwood, the gentle palette number two. The gentle palette number three, the same principle. This is the first batch with onion skins. This is more kind of uh, goldish, a bit um, more saturated yellow. And this is brighter. I, it's, it's, it's very funny how it gets because it's the same. Yeah, it, I would, I could do kind of a um, ombre, uh, collection because depending of the batch of the the yarn will be brighter or lighter so so this is the gentle palette number ah four sorry this is the four oh, see daisies so this is the number four with onion skins this is the gentle palette number three so this is the one that i was using um avocado pits and then I also put some catch. I had some catch extract, which is a plant that's, um, that I got as well when I was in uh, bow knitting. I got a set of uh, natural dyes. So this is the avocado pits and catch. So again, this is the more saturated kind of, but again, the colors, whenever you dye with avocado pits, it's softer, it's not a brownish. It could go even pinkish but it depends on the saturation since I put the avocado pit and the skin it gets kind of beige brownish and this is the softer you see and can you see the sheen of the silk it's beautiful and then the last this one all of this uh, this is with the, uh, walnut husk and this one I don't have two batches because the, the saturation of the walnut husk all of them came the same because it's very strong. So this is the walnut husk, it's a brownish, beautiful. So yes, they, they are. This is the, the collection that I will be putting to the shop update for next week. And I'm very happy with it. You see, it's very springy uh, colorways and that you can use it. I remember um, a client of mine, um, she ordered a custom dye of this base and these colors, especially uh, with the cochineal and the, well, she ordered this, the three of them because she wanted to make a shawl for, she's a weaver. And this yarn, it's a fingering. So it was perfect for her loom. And she made a beautiful, beautiful uh, shawl and, um, she bought one of the yarns in in the festival and she needed more so she contacted me and i it was very nice hearing that she loved and the the daughter loved them so that's why i decided to put this into the shop and i hope you enjoy it and you like it the shop update is going to be march the th uh, day 12th and um, yeah i hope you stop by and see something find something that you like it well, I think that's all for this 
episode. As you see, I don't have much knitting projects or I didn't, um, I just finished one, but, but it's okay. It's perfect uh, socks and I didn't have the second sock syndrome. I still keep working on this, it, which seems that I am enjoying making socks. And next time, hopefully I am done with this uh, vanilla socks and um, yeah, with the cosmics as well, I have progress there. And yeah, so thank you <laughs> for being uh, in the podcast with me and uh, see you next time. Take care. Bye.